early 1990s, New Kids on the Block were the biggest thing in the world, and teenage girls went bananas for them. They were everywhere. They were dolls. They were towels. They were lunch boxes. The New Kids on the Block! They played the Super Bowl halftime show. They were a really big pop deal. In 1991, Forbes magazine said new kids made more money than Madonna and Michael Jackson. But manufactured boy bands have been around forever. Then I saw her face. Look at the monkeys. Now I'm a Just as long as you me. And there was also Menudo. Ricky Martin was at one point a member. And don't forget New Edition. My girl's the best and that's no lie. They had Bobby Brown. I'm her only guy. But it was the success of New Kids that really caught Lou's attention. Please have a seat, sir. Has a mic, Good. Lou Perlman talked to Chris Cuomo on 2020 in 2000. I was invited to come down to one of the shows. All the screaming. I was like, my God, what's going on here? And these girls are these T-shirts and hats and chains and posters. I love the new kids. I was like, man, this is exciting. I mean, not to mention, OK, there's a tinkle to the cash register, no question about it. Unbelievable. So what'd you do? I said, I think I can do that. I think I can put a group like that together. By the time Lou had his idea to start a boy band, he was living in Orlando, Florida. And Orlando is a great place to be if you want to start a boy band because there's a lot of young talent auditioning for roles at the theme parks. I was a manager at the time. AJ McLean was a client. I always felt that because he had this talent and he was so focused on what he wanted to do from such a young age that he was destined for something very special. I get a phone call one day from this gentleman who I'd never heard of before named Lou Perlman. He had heard AJ sing and really loved him and he wanted to know if I would work with him to put a new boy group together kind of on the lines of the new kids on the block. And so I'm like, hell yeah, I'm jumping on that. He said I could manage the group and be a co-producer with him. The big problem with New Kids on the Block is that there was a rumor that they couldn't sing live. So what Lou Perlman thought was, oh, well, I'll find five guys who are good looking and can dance, but that can sing. So Lou puts an ad in the Orlando Sentinel, which reads, producer seeks male singers that move well between 16 and 19 years of age, wanted for a new kids type singing dance group. Lou Perlman had a blimp warehouse where he stored the blimp parts in Kissimmee, Florida. And uh, one by one, the kids came in. Nikki Carter sang Bridge Over Troubled Waters, and oh my God, he knocked us on the floor. Obviously, A.J. McLean. We had Howard DeRoad. Howie had a great voice. Those are the three originals, and we needed five. I like the sound, but I said to him, you really need to have five-part harmony. Lou actually found Kevin at a Disney parade. He was playing Aladdin. Kevin came into the group and recommended his cousin, Brian. And he says, I have a cousin in Kentucky. His name is Brian Luttrell. He sings in church. He's a really good singer. So that formed five guys together. I put the money out to help them. We give them choreographers, we give them vocal lessons, we provide tutors. I think I'm a great cultivator. Lou was a big guy, but he wasn't a threatening guy. He was kind of a cherubic, roly-poly kind of soft guy. I mean, they call me Big Papa. Lou does give himself a nickname, it's Big Papa, because he's got it all covered. He's taking care of all of it. The kids all called him Big Papa, and uh, it was endearing. I thought it was very sweet, you know, at the time. <laughs> So the boys kind of welcomed Perlman as a father figure, especially Kevin Richardson, whose father had recently died of cancer. And AJ had grown up pretty much without a father. Nick Carter lived in Tampa. His father was a former truck driver who ran a nursing home with his wife, Jane. And money was tight. When Nick was 13, he was offered big bucks to join the Mickey Mouse Club. And surprisingly enough, his parents allowed him to choose Lou Perlman's group instead of the Mickey Mouse Club. He was offered the Mickey Mouse Club contract, and then he was also offered this opportunity with the Backstreet Boys, which at that time, they didn't even have a name. 
Jane, how much money did you turn down by not having Nick be a Mouseketeer? It was $50,000. That was a really tough decision. In many ways, Perlman filled a void for these boys. But Big Papa could be a tough taskmaster. Boy band boot camp, basically that's what it was. These kids worked seven days a week, from early morning till early evening, every day. Sometimes we're in sweat a lot. We're in an environment, sometimes they didn't have air conditioning. But um, it was great for the times that they were on tour and the hot summer nights, or the hot summer days, that uh, they were good that they had that training. I think Lou's passion at that point, at, at the beginning, was so endearing and his drive. In the spring of 1993, they appear on local Channel 6 in Orlando. What is your name? I'm AJ McLean. AJ, and who are you? Howie D. Howie? Okay, now, where are you from? I'm from Lexington, Kentucky. My name's Brian Littrell. Brian, okay. And over here? I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I'm Nick Carter. Okay, and who are you? I'm Kevin Richardson. I'm from Lexington, Kentucky. The new heartthrobs, huh? Make some noise for the Backstreet Boys! And then Lou books them at SeaWorld, which is, of course, a big attraction in Orlando. And it includes the Temptations classic, Get Ready. Perlman makes a video of the SeaWorld performance and sends it around to people in the industry. Former New Kids on the Block road managers Johnny Wright and his then-wife Donna see the tape, and they think the boys have potential. We feel good. Good, good good. We're happy. We're never going to forget where we came from. Johnny and Donna came down, and they helped me manage the group. So this is Johnny Wright, production manager and voice of the New Kids. What I had heard about him prior to meeting him, that he was a billionaire. He runs around in a Rolls Royce. He owns all these blimps in Orlando. He also told me he was a writer and a producer. I had no reason to doubt anything that he was telling me at that time. And he had already put the band together. So I just felt like, hey, we lucked into something here. But remember, Perlman has already hired Gene Tanzi as their manager. Lou Perlman said, Gene, you know we love you, but we really need to bring in someone who you know, has a lot more experience in the music industry. You're always going to be family. That was my goodbye kick. He just cut me out completely. With Johnny and Donna Wright on board as managers, the Backstreet Boys go on a tour of high schools. They would do three shows a day in three different schools, and they would bust out on the gym floor, and the girls would lose their mind, and they had never heard of them before. I went to all the schools and saw the genesis of Backstreet Boys going around the country. You really have to be hands-on and be out there and see what's going on. He had his hands in everything, and he would be like, yeah, I don't know if that move is right. He would show them in a funny way, like something that they should do. Lou always felt that they shouldn't be so covered up, so he always was thinking about the girls' wants, like pin-up guys and stuff like that. And I also have to recall that this was when grunge was a big deal. Nirvana, Pearl Jam. We're getting gangster rap and Snoop Doggy Dog is all the rage. And so <laughs> what's everybody talking about? A boy band. Everybody. Now all they need is a record deal, and they'll get one. But by the time they get one, there'll be somebody else installed as a kind of sixth member of the group. The sixth man. Back streets, back, all right. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.